Mountains of garbage are a dirty reality for Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. But a new waste management project hopes to turn trash into a cheap source of energy. Every day, more than 18 tons of garbage are scooped off the streets and brought to this factory in the slum of Carrefour Ferry. Workers sift through it and separate out the plastics and glass, which they'll sell to recycling factories in Canada. Community leader Patrick Massena says the project has had a major impact on the community. First, it reduces violence. Second, it raises people's buying power by bringing jobs. And third, it's cleaning up the place. But not only that, the paper waste serves a special purpose. It gets pounded, mashed up, mixed with sawdust, and then squeezed into cylinders to make a dry briquette that most Haitians have never seen before, recycled paper charcoal. Jeanette Sejour is a briquette maker. She has seven children. She says Haitian women may come to prefer recycled paper briquettes because they're cheap. Charcoal for wood is a lot more expensive. You easily spend 25 cents to cook a pot of rice. But with recycled paper charcoal, you only spend seven cents. The factory makes about 500 briquettes a day, which they plan to sell in the local markets for a penny apiece. Eliana Nicolini of the UNDP is managing the project with technical support from India, South Africa and Brazil. This is really a cross-cutting social project that is addressing health, the environment and the economy by creating jobs. Nearly 400 people have jobs here, no small feat in a country with 80 percent unemployment. But that's not all. The briquettes could also help solve Haiti's looming environmental crisis. Without electricity, Haiti's population of nearly 9 million depends on wood-based charcoal for fuel. So it's no surprise that the country has lost 98 percent of its trees. Bare mountainsides lead to erosion and severe flooding. Though a tropical island, parts of Haiti are fast becoming a desert. Recycled paper charcoal may offer the country the chance to clean up, create jobs, and save its remaining forests. It may also help people face the rising cost of living. In April, Haitians rioted over the high cost of food, killing six people and forcing the prime minister from office. Months later, the government is still struggling to regroup. During the food riots in Port-au-Prince, nobody attacked the factory. People came to protect the project because they know it is in their best interest. If the project succeeds in this slum, other communities are likely to replicate it. So in Haiti, one man's trash can be another man's charcoal. This report was prepared by Amelia Shaw and Blagoj Gruyich for the United Nations.